Hi guys, welcome back to the Tropical Castle Zoo series here on Planet Zoo. In today's video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a snow leopard Himalayan style enclosure. What I am doing is I'm doing like quite a big aviary. It's one I have seen recently, so I'm taking a little bit of inspiration from one of the aviaries actually in Artist Zoo in Amsterdam. So pretty much what I'm going to do is have kind of like a, an angled aviary. Also, it's going to be a little bit different this video, so I'm going to do it more of like a tutorial. I'm going to kind of just walk through and show you how I actually created it. It's fairly straightforward. It's the only bits that are a little bit tricky is creating the sides because there's no kind of slanted panels. So pretty much what I do is I use the, I believe it's one meter by one meter or two by two. So it's pretty much just kind of pushing them into position. So I'd use like a step down technique. I will go through all that in the tutorial. I just wanted to touch as well because I know I said I was inspired and the title of this is Snow Leopards. There isn't Snow Leopards at Artist Zoo. I am just inspired by the Avery that's there. The Avery that's in Artist, I don't think there's anything in it at the moment. When I went, I don't recall actually seeing any animals in there. I know they do have a couple of cool Averys. I know they've got the ones for the Jaguars. It's quite a cool kind of, I want to say like a bait bean shape. I don't really know what other shape to say, but it just kind of looks like a bait bean. So what I'll do here is just straight into the tutorial. So just you in using the metal holes. So I'm making sure that my angle snap is on here. So making sure it's at 15 degrees. That's probably the, um, the key, key part of this one. So just going up one and then angle snapping. So the one at the top as well, I have done it twice. So count that as more of like 30 degrees. So that's going to be the basic shape. So I'm just going through and mimicking that on this side as well. Okay, so exactly the same. So same angles, everything you've done on that side, you want to copy it over pretty much. You can even use the duplicate, it's entirely up to you. I'm just going to show you this way because this is how I did it in game. So obviously don't do what I did there, but make sure you've always got the angles on right. Um, so remember from the top, it was the, the double of angle the 30 degrees as such and then the rest are the 15s and um, if you get the if you get one side done to make it easy you can literally just control z and flip the whole thing around and just align it up that's probably would have been the easier thing for me to do but obviously i made it a little bit harder for myself and just did it completely manual for the back side so from here this is where i'm going to start adding the netting for the aviary obviously an aviary wouldn't be an aviary without the without the netting around it so just recoloring all that to black and um, just make sure you've got your angle snap on again so what the angle snap will do is it will just keep everything to the angles so when you turn it obviously i've got mine on 15 degrees so it will turn it in slight increments and um, it just makes it align up easier with the already beam like the metal beams that you've already got placed down so just doing the same just following the beams all the way around I'm just going to do exactly the same on this side and then what I'll also do is just to make it easier I'll show you how to kind of flip it over as well. So I'll do this one side and then I'll show you how to duplicate and flip the whole thing over. So what I'll do is I'll just let that go through and then I'll get that top piece in and then I'll flip that all around for you. Okay so I forgot to mention as well it's also very important to make sure it's all aligned up correctly. So as you can see I'm just amending that just kind of lifting it up and down backwards and forwards just to make sure you've got the right kind of um, right kind of angle. So that's completely crucial. You need to make sure that is in place. So what I did there was inside the grid, I selected all the outside metal beams. So it's the small square metal beams that I've used. And then I've control X those. So what that will do is that's um, like a, a move and duplicate as such, advanced move and duplicate, sorry. So I'm doing that with the outside beam because I can't flip the whole thing because the the netting would be on the opposite side so I'm doing it that way so I'm not so much separating I'm just selecting them separately um, and then pulling it over just to make it symmetrical on both sides so that is the overall frame so just going to add all those into the group just so it's easier when it comes to editing I could just select straight into the group and everything's all as one piece so just making a start on the side of the Avery so just going to go to in and um, what I'm also going to do as well is just going to leave a little gap in the middle. So just going to delete that one out in the middle and just make it so it's more of like a keeper access. Um, my initial plan was to have the keeper door here, but because I'm in franchise mode, obviously as you know if you do play franchise mode the animal requirements are a lot higher than if you play sandbox mode. 
So eventually I turned this just into like an animal tunnel from the animal house. So it wasn't necessarily needed. I could have just built right up to this. So yeah, so filling up the side of this. So it's a little bit tricky. So the best thing to do with this is to use the smaller pieces. Um, it is extremely fiddly, but it's it's the best way to achieve what, what you will be looking for. So you kind of have to do it in steps. So as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm stepping it up probably two or three of the small grid places at a time. So I know there is a slight little gap at the side, but you can't really see that to the eye once you zoomed out and once the build's complete. So it's more or less filling the outside shape. So from there, what I'm doing is just pretty much going up in the steps and doing that all the way to the top. Obviously you can come back, so I have got the two by twos, I think it's two by twos at the moment, and I do come back in with the one by ones and just kind of fill in where's needed. So pretty much just doing that all the way through um, just to get that shape. And then what you can do in the middle is you just kind of use the bigger ones just to fill like the, the wider area, if that makes sense. So it's more details around the side and then it's pretty much just filling in blank space in the middle. So what I'll do is I'll pop this bit into speed build. You'll just kind of see like an overview of what I'm doing and then I'll come back once I've completed this bit. Okay, so that is all the side complete. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select all of the mesh pieces. So that is the bit over the over the top. So the shape that we formed at the start. Um, so that is gonna be duplicated. So I duplicated that all the way down. What I'm also doing here is I'm just selecting all of the little tricky pieces that we that we've placed. So I also added some metal beams as well, just as more of like a, a realism aspect. Um, obviously I know it's not. 100% real, but it is what it is. So just flipping that round and popping that straight over to the other side. So that is pretty much just the basics of how I created the Snow Leopard Avery. So we're going to fill that bit in because this is the end of the Avery. So just going to get that moved into place. So I want it a little bit further back. So I'm going to build like a little kind of inlet for it. So the guests can kind of walk in. There's a little shelter. I'm going to do it kind of industrial looking. Just going to use like corrugated iron as you can see here so this is just going to be a viewing area i'm going to put like a little pond it just some like alpine rocks and 
pretty much just have that as the main kind of viewing point. So I think it'd be quite good to kind of see the guests coming in, putting the education in there as well. So just making some adjustments to the building itself. So I think that bit there looks quite cool on the side of the Avery because it's more of like an immersive kind of experience. Um, I will add the, the glass into that in a second. Okay, so just going to finish up the terraform in here. Going to add the water in as well. As you can see here, I did make a little bit of a, a mistake so I didn't add the path in first. So if you're doing something like this, always add the path in first because if you do the terraforming before and you place the path, the path will kind of go a bit skew if if that's the right word. I'm not sure if anyone else around the UK uses that, but and I'm not sure if that's a, a Derbyshire saying or not. I'm not 100% sure. We do have a lot of random sayings that people have never heard of before. So that's another tangent for another video. So just going to add the floor in into the viewing area. So I want to keep it as that kind of tundra, kind of arctic style. I know they're not from the arctic, they are from the Himalayas. So these guys live at like really high altitudes. So we need to make it as cold as possible for them because obviously the Himalayas isn't a sunny paradise. It's quite frosty up there and that's why they've got their thick coats. So just going to create the animal tunnel here. So this was kind of a last minute and I said it was initially meant to be a keeper's gate. So this was kind of a last minute thing. Um, I kind of just not so much panicked. I was like, oh God, I don't know what to add here. And then I thought, kind of thinking back to real life zoos, most of them would have like a kind of transfer tunnel. I know if we look at, for example, Yorkshire Wildlife Park, Project Polar, if you've ever been over the bridge, because they've got three reserves, if you cross over the bridge between them all, if you look down on the side where their hard shelter is, they have like connecting tunnels so they can separate them. So they've got, I'm not sure of the pair, I know, People know the names and stuff, but I'm not 100% sure of the names that stay together. But when I've been, there's been four male polar bears in one, two in another, I believe. And then sometimes there's two, two and another two, I think. I think I watched the video and I think they kind of just play it by ear because I think they are solitary in the, in the wild. But I think in captivity, they're not as, um, not as solitary, I believe. So I think they're okay to kind of just live together, but obviously we're not building polar bears today, so that will be another another tangent, like I said. Um, so back to the snow leopards and the realism side. So the animal tunnel, so just to kind of think more of like a real zoo, they would have kind of like connect, a connecting tunnel. It's just so obviously the keepers can separate them if needed. I know that's not a possibility on Planet Zoo. You can manually do it, but the keepers can't do that. Okay, so whilst recording this one, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to add a little section here. Um, just wanted to share a couple of facts that I actually found out about the snow leopards whilst editing this one. So the reason they're called snow leopards is actually quite surprising because they're not actually related as such to the leopard family. Apparently they are closer related to the tiger, which makes no sense to me because... Surely if they're called snow leopards, they'd be kind of closely related to like ammo leopards or African leopards, all that kind of stuff. So these guys live at roughly 3,000 to 4,500 feet above ground elevation height. So obviously, you know, they, they live in the Himalayas. So their diet mainly consists of blue sheep. I haven't actually heard of those before, but they are native to the Himalaya Nepal area and they aren't actually blue apparently. So their tails as well, so they have quite long tails if you've ever seen these in zoos. Um, I don't know if many zoos around the UK have these. I know Chester Zoo are getting these, I think it's either end of this month or beginning end of next month. I know it's very soon because I went last weekend and their enclosure is practically finished. So yes, they have really long tails. That's all just to help with balance when they're jumping to and from rocks around the Himalayas. So they're not jumping from mountain. Um, it is probably just there. So when they're jumping, catching the prey and stuff, they can use their tail as more balance. It um, makes sense. So their markings as well. So they're actually used to disguise them against the rocky terrains. So I know obviously grey, it probably will cover quite a lot of different things because they've got hints of like brown and stuff. So if it is snowy in the area they're in, they would kind of blend in against the rocks and the snow, which makes it a lot easier to catch their prey. Um, so another one as well is they 
can jump stupidly high. So they can jump about nine meters, which is roughly about six times their body length. So they're just a couple of facts that I wanted to share with yourselves. Okay, so back to the build. So what I'm going to do from here is I am going to fill all of their indoor area as such. Just going to make it kind of like separation cages, just in case if um, in a real life situation, obviously this isn't real life, but we're going to pretend it is. Um, so if they were to breed, they'd have separate pens and obviously they've got all their, all their bedding and stuff in there. So just going to add all their kind of essential enrichment in items. So the essential ones I kind of class are like obviously water bowls, water pumps, um, the feeding plates, the ones with the, the like the square feeding plates that they put the meat on. Don't actually know what they're called. I'll have to double check on that one. It's quite bad that I've only been playing for a little bit and I don't even know that. Um, so just adding the cooler in there as well. Obviously it's a Himalayan animal. It needs to be cold. So what I will do from this bit, I'm um, just going to give you a quick run through of what I'm aiming for and I will pop it in speed build. So I want to kind of replicate the Himalayas as such. So I'm going to be using a lot of kind of tundra, rockage. I'm going to kind of build like a slope up to the back of the Avery. I'm going to be using a lot of dead trees, a lot of kind of pine trees and stuff like that. So what I'll do is I'll pop some music over now and I will come back at the end and just do more of a, a detailed run through on what I've done. And if there's any bits that I want to kind of go through, I'll stop the speed build. Um, and I'll just kind of talk you through and give you like a little tutorial as such.
Okay, so that is the enclosure complete. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add the education part. So I know I didn't show this on video, but this is just the giant tortoise um, habitat that I completed at the end of the last one. I know I put the stones down, but I just did it off camera. Um, it's not a massive one, so I didn't I didn't record it. I just kind of went with it. So add in the educational points in now. So as you can see, there's a couple of different viewing areas. You can kind of stand where that board is and probably see them coming out of the out of the house. Um, I did also build in the speed build as well. If you saw another bit on the opposite side, so that's more of just um, just so they can hit their requirements. Because franchise mode on Planet Zoo, as you know, is as it would be in real life. You need to provide them with enough space. And unfortunately, the house and the Avery didn't have quite enough. There was probably about 100 square meters. I know it's not going to affect their overall welfare because it was in the orange. It was very close to the limit. But what I've done is just to up it to as high as I can possibly get it. I have just built standard enclosure just at the back, which is completely off show. So just back to the educational bit. So I'm adding an educational speaker to the roof of the viewing gallery. So this will cover the whole of the viewing area. So what we'll do is the guests will go in, they'll see the information boards, they'll hear the presentation or whatever's coming through the speaker and they'll come out obviously knowing a lot more about the leopards. So just adding some more litter bins around here because in franchise mode the guests do litter a hell of a lot. Um, obviously donation bins as well, they're very very important in franchise mode because it's probably one of the main sources of income. So we're just going to pop them at any point where the guests can pop by and just kind of because they just literally throw the money straight into it so just popping them next to all the educational bits okay so just want to touch on a little thing as well so i know i mentioned earlier i'm not sure which zoos in the uk do have snow leopards so i have actually been to two that have snow leopards on display um so twycross zoo have like a big himalaya building so they have a costa i don't actually think you have to pay to see the snow leopards because it's one of them that's before you go through the ticket gate so where their play area is they've got like a costa coffee and then they've got tables along the window and then on the opposite side of that window is their snow leopard reserve so you could just sit and kind of just watch the snow leopards all day i know they have got both of them in there now i know the first time i went it was just one and i think one of them was off show both of them are in there now as part of the breeding program i believe another one as well which is inspiration for this zoo is dudley castle and zoo they also have snow leopards we did see the tail of the snow leopard but it seems it was hiding quite high up on one of its um, one of its elevation points so we didn't actually manage to see them properly and then there's a couple of zoos that i haven't been to so um paradise wildlife park which is now Hertfordshire zoo recently been renamed they've got snow leopards obviously chester zoo are getting snow leopards highland wildlife park which i could have visited a couple of years ago when i went camping in scotland so me and my friend we stayed in glenmore or is it glencoe it was yeah glenmore avonmore area up in the highlands in the cairgorms so we went camping up there and that is where highland wildlife park is so we was literally five minutes away and I had absolutely no clue it was close by, otherwise we would have gone and visited. And then there's Marwell Zoo as well, which is down the south end of the country, I believe. They also have snow leopards. Um, if there's any I've missed off, I do apologise, but that's just a very quick search. Just did a little bit of research to see if I could find any around the UK. So both of these are now in their enclosure, so I'll put all the enrichment items in. Um, so as you can see in the background, I've tried to make it as close to kind of that... Himalayan vibe as possible. I've also put a couple of their plants on the outside as well just to make it a bit more natural. Obviously there's only so far you can go with making it natural in a zoo. So I just wanted to mimic that kind of Himalayan vibe as much as possible. So I'm quite happy with this one. It's the first time I've built a proper aviary as such. Um, it turned out quite well if I'm being honest. I'm saying it's my first shot at it. So if you wanted to give that a go, if you found that tutorial useful then I'm happy I can help with that one. So just going to make some amendments here. There's a couple of rocks poking out. They'll do my add in in a couple of days time. So we're getting. 
Okay, so in this video, I also want to just to touch on the recent videos and stuff on Planet Zoo Console Edition. So I have played Planet Coaster on console. I haven't played Planet Coaster on PC. I would like to get it at some point because I believe the PC version is a lot more in depth than the console version. It, I believe that will potentially be the case with Planet Zoo console because I know they've got the complexity counter on there. On Planet Coaster we did have something called the Oswald Eugene counter. So in theory what that is, is it's just because it's built on a console, I think it's got limitations. So I remember when I was just kind of playing around on Planet Coaster, there's only so many coasters you can place. So if you was to make a park full of tiny coasters, you would fit more in. If you made like really big ones, you would get less. More scenery pieces you put in, it kind of counts such so i'm not sure if detailed builds will be a thing in the coat on the console version sorry um it would be good if the were i don't know what the kind of complexity counter will be like i know they showed kind of like a little zoo that they've made which was at 50 percent, i believe in the video which looked pretty full so i've got high hopes for that one um i'm not sure if it's something I will potentially pick up. I haven't really got a reason to pick it up because obviously I've got it on PC. I've brought all the DLCs on PC. I've got all the DLCs so far on here, so I've spent quite a bit getting everything and obviously I've got everything up to this current date and I'll get whichever if we do get any more DLCs. But I'm not sure. I don't think it's something I would potentially pick up on console. It's really good that it is on console now because now everyone gets the chance to play it. But obviously if you're going in expecting to build these kind of levels zoos where there's going to be masses of scenery, I'm not 100% sure if you are going to be able to achieve that. I really do hope you can, but if we're comparing it to Planet Coaster on console, my hopes aren't overly high for the complexity counter. But hopefully that doesn't steer anyone off from buying it, because like I say it is an amazing game. You'll have lots of fun either way if you just wanted to build like mini zoos. To be quite honest, you probably could build something on a larger scale, but you'd probably just have to cut back on kind of trees and place in as much scenery. But don't get me wrong, you can still have an amazing time playing that one. I'd definitely recommend getting it and just having a go because I was a bit not so much apprehensive about getting this one because I've never really played any zoo games before. So this is the first time I've kind of picked up and played, which is, you know, I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, I know Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 had like a zoo expansion pack, but it was nowhere near as in detail as this. But I really, really enjoyed that as well. So I kind of just thought if I enjoyed that, I'm really, really going to enjoy this one. And it works out rather well, so that's a good thing. So yeah, I'm hoping the console edition is going to be good for those who want to play it. So whilst we're on the topic of potential DLCs, I know roughly around this time there's meant to be one due. I've not heard anything, it's just kind of been rumours, I've seen videos. Whether it'll happen or not, I'm not 100% sure, I really hope it does. But I have kind of like a little wish list what I'm hoping for. It's quite big, but I'm just hoping this is something that will eventually happen in time. If Planet Zoo is coming to the end of its, its run with DLCs, what I will probably do is it kind of opens the door to start playing with mods, which is quite exciting. Um, I don't really want to hop into mods at the minute with obviously new DLCs being released, new updates, well, new major updates as such, because I know if you've got mods installed, it can sometimes break it. But my kind of dream DLC would be the Andean Bear, which is also known as the Spectacle Bear. They have these at Chester Zoo. That is the only place I've seen them. I think they've got two there, I think. There's one in the spirit of the Jaguar house, and then there's one in his own enclosure opposite the Capybaras. I would also like a bird's pack, so you can make Averys, just kind of what you would see in your standard zoos, so like parrots, all the other ones, vultures, just those kind of things. This one is a little bit hit or miss, but the Asiatic lions. So I know they're not much different, but at the moment, if 
they did want to add them to Yuzu. There's not an option. There is only the West African lion. The geladas or geladas, I'm not sure how you say it, but it's the one, I think they're called Bleeding Heart Monkeys. They have them at Yorkshire Wildlife Park and Dudley Zoo. They're the only two places I've ever seen them. But they think they're part of the baboon family, but they're pretty cool. They've got really big hair. The ones at Yorkshire are pretty cool. Um, I would also like some different kind of baboons. So like the New Guinea baboons, just those kind of ones. Uh, Sumatran orangutans, so they have longer hair than the Borneo orangutan, I believe. I do apologise if I'm wrong with that one, but I'm pretty sure I read that at Chester Zoo the other day. I would also like Maras added to the game. So they are like kind of little rabbits. They look similar to capybaras. Um, another one which I think would be quite good is the African leopard. I would also like to see spider monkeys, rollaway monkeys and red howler monkeys. So they're like my main hits. They're the ones that I really, really do want in a DLC. Whether that's going to happen, it's kind of how long's a piece of string if it will happen. But I would be over the moon if any of those were to be released. But honestly, if there was no more DLCs for Planet Zoo, I wouldn't be too, too disappointed. I mean, I'm really, really happy with the game at the moment. It is pretty much all I play. I've got other games as well, but this is pretty much my priority at the minute. Obviously, I've got the two... Well, I haven't released the second series yet, but I have got another series which I am working on. I know I mentioned it in a couple of videos, but the City Zoo, that one is sandbox, so I can go as crazy as I want on that one. I haven't got to worry about guests being angry, sad, all the other emotional stuff they do. So... Yeah, if Planet Zoo doesn't release any more DLCs, I won't be too upset. With what we've got at the moment, I'm quite happy. I'm quite content with the content we've got in the game. Um, just the ones I've mentioned, I just think they'd add that extra kind of touch just to improve the overall overall game. And just extra animals that are pretty cool to add into your zoo. So whilst I've been talking, I've seen the background here. This wasn't as such planned. It was a very last minute thing. Um, I've just added a little swan lake. It's not so much a main feature, it's just to kind of fill this area. What I wanted to do was I wanted to add the wolverines here, but when I was reading on their Zoopedia, they need massive requirements and that space there is not going to be big enough in franchise mode. So we're going to build them on a different area of the zoo. So we're just going to make this a little swan lake and just have it as like a little kind of chill out area for the guests to walk around before they go into the snow leopard. So that is pretty much it for this video. So that's everything complete. So snow leopard, the Himalayan area is kind of complete. It's not going to be a massive area. It's just a one-off for the snow leopards. The swans, they're just to break up what we've got there already. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fix up the castle because I know in previous videos I have said I made this way too big. So I want to reduce it down by roughly half the size. So I don't want it to be a completely full castle. I want it to be kind of the front half of the castle and the back half of the castle has been, I don't know, destroyed in age or something if it's just kind of crumbled over time. So I want it to be more of a ruin. Eventually in time, I want to build some kind of enclosures incorporated into the castle. So what I'm doing here is I'm just selecting the castle as a whole. And then what I've done is I've split it from the group Probably not the best way to do this, but I really didn't want to sit and click through every single piece. And I didn't know another way, so I've just split all the groups and that is the size we're going for. So this castle here is what we are going to be working with going forwards. So like I said, what I want to do is probably fill it with, it's probably going to have a gift shop in there. Um, I would like to put a couple of animal enclosures, probably like a food court, restaurant. Like I say, this zoo is not going to be massive, it's going to be very small. It's just going to be like a small little family kind of zoo style. I don't want it to be like a massive kind of project. It's just a starting point. Like I say, I'm new here, so it's just kind of testing the waters. See what people like, see what people don't like. Um, if this one goes well, we might, we might do a sandbox version of the castle zoo. Who knows? We might do something like a castle. I'm trying to think of something. If we did, I don't know an arctic castle or something and make the whole zoo like an arctic theme do some polar bears, arctic foxes, arctic wolves kind of go down that route, I think that'd be quite cool but obviously at the minute we're sticking with the tropical it's 
I don't want to say it's an easy one to do, but reality is it's an easy, easy biome to work with. You've not got to worry too much about temperatures. The only thing you really have to do is call animals down if they require it. I know doing European, the weather can be crazy. It's either hot, it's snowing, and then the animals go crazy. So, obviously, further down the line, when I'm feeling like a bit more of a challenge, I'll probably do that. But at the minute, I'm still learning game mechanics as I go. Obviously, there's bits probably that I don't know, probably settings that I don't use. So, it's just trial and error at the moment. Like I say, I've only really learned from other YouTubers. So I know I've, I'm not sure if I've mentioned recently, but um, the people that I watched when I got into Planet Zoo, um, the lady designer, she did some really, really cool zoos. She's quite good with her tutorials and stuff. Another person who is absolutely amazing with tutorials is Adam Up Gaming. I know I linked his roof, well, his building tutorial in the first video I did. Um, another one is ZSH Plays. He's done a couple of zoos. Um, I really like his London Zoo that he did. That was, I think that was probably the first one I watched, to be quite honest, because that one was pretty cool. Uh, currently watching his San Bernardino Zoo at the minute. So, a couple of people. There's people on TikTok as well, just not so much um, creating big videos, but they're just making like little TikToks that I see. Um, but yeah, they kind of just helped along the way. Other than that, I've just kind of picked it up. I know there's a couple of groups on social medias and stuff that post bits and bobs. I'm in a couple of them, so I'll post most of the videos in there. Um, you pick up tips and tricks from everyone as you play this game, I think. It's a very, very open community. Everyone seems to be pretty good, so that's nice. So yeah, I think the Castle Zoo is coming along very nicely so far. Obviously, we've not got a lot in here. We're only on episode four. Um, so far I've got, I think, 22 episodes recorded. So that is pretty much it for today's video. So I'm just going to leave you with lovely shots of the swans swimming around in front of the castle and the snow leopards. So like I say, if you are new here, please hit that subscribe button. It would really help me out. If you have enjoyed this video, drop a like. As always, if you want to name any of the animals, drop it down below. I'm going to make a kind of video at the end of the series just going over all that but that is it for me today so cheers for that one and i'll see you in the next one thank you